The following is a presentation of the Radio Misfits Podcast Network. Hey guys, this is James Flippin of RadioMisfits.com and also one of the -the behind-the-scenes guys for the Artie Quitter Podcast. Right now, you're listening to the free weekly edition of the Artie Quitter Uncensored Podcast on the Radio Misfits Network. If you'd like to hear more, visit ArtieQuitter.com and subscribe to the four-day-a-week podcast. We are back. My next guest tonight, please welcome a very funny guy, Artie Lang. We are joined right now by a hilarious comedian, his latest project, the Artie Quitter Podcast. Please give a warm welcome to a good friend of the show. Here's Artie Lang, ladies and gentlemen. It always makes me laugh when I see Artie Lang on stage. <laughs> Knowing I'm going to outlive him. <laughs> a Jack Daniels swilling pizza eating, dog hating, whore using, cocaine abusing, hairy back, big belly blowhard from New Jersey. The fat little bastard known as Artie Lang. How do you feel about uh, that story that came out with the Farley brothers? Did you see that? No, I didn't. You're going to fill me in on this. Uh, that Well, the Farley, it's, uh, the headline, and again, I don't know what this fake news. Farley family blames Bob Saget for their brother's death. <laughs> That's not true. Dan, of course, going on with the practical joke by laughing. Are you are you making up the story? Yeah, I was trying to, and then Dan went, <laughs> Oh, that was a good one. Okay, I feel better now. <laughs> I, know. I well, thought for a minute you said the Farrelly brothers, and I thought I had something to do with the. <laughs> you don't know Gummo. You don't know why gum- the sequel to Dumb and Dumber didn't work. <laughs> you don't know Gummo Farrelly. Say what? Gummo Farrelly. You never heard of him? Oh, I loved him and Zeppo. Zeppo Farrelly was the best. Do you realize that me and Gilbert? They had a, they had a great dad. Me and Gilbert were talking about. This. Me and Gilbert were talking about this. By the way, the Farley brothers have never well, said thing, the, the, thing, the Farley Marty. brothers have never said that publicly. No, 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 no. You can't really blame me for anything because I always escape in the night. But, um, <laughs> you do, man. You were, were you at the premiere for Dirty Work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, Norm and I, the night Dirty Work opened in theaters in L.A., yeah. first thing, this is Artie Lang's show, and I'm on it. It's Bob Saget. We, handle, we handled that before. Oh, you did it already? Yeah, we, we have it, our, our own Ed McMahon. <laughs> oh, you have a whole, oh, you have a whole <laughs> promotional thing that just sounds like some hot yeah. intro. I said, uh, ladies I, and gentlemen... You know him from Growing Pains. That's right. Bob Saget. I'm, I'm having them every time I make a crap. Do you ever see Kirk Cameron at the uh, Kid Show Kid Show Awards? <laughs> have you been slimed? Actually, I, I have not been slimed, but I, but it drips out of my penis. But, <laughs> Green stuff. And it, and it burns through metal. You're like, like Bill, Bill Shatner. It, yeah, when I my semen is like alien acid. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, uh, you know what? I'll let you uh, talk first. First thing, I'm all I want to do I'll, the I'll, intro. I'll, Okay, 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 okay. All right, listen. Uh, I, I, uh, in 1997, I met Bob Saget at his offices in uh, Santa Monica. Uh, I did what was called the screen test. Norm MacDonald didn't even get off the couch. But uh, Bob was so nice, and uh, he basically uh, helped me through the whole thing. Uh, I think basically because he, he envisioned Stephen Baldwin doing the jokes in the, in the script, uh, who was the first choice of the studio. Uh, luckily, Chris Penn had an issue. So I was uh, their first choice. And Saget was my biggest champion. And then they said, listen, you probably got the part, but let's go out and uh, try to get to know each other. Because it's like going to boot camp. It's a buddy comedy. So right. me, me, Norm, and Saget, we go to a pool hall in Hollywood. It's not there anymore. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, they know that I've been to jail for possession of cocaine uh, in L.A. County. Uh, I didn't tell you that uh, the, the guy in the cell next to me had taught me how to make a pussy out of toilet paper. And... Uh, <laughs> You'll never go back to real pussy, man. It don't fucking complain. It don't take your money. It don't fuck your friend. So this is what, 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 what this happened. Wait, we're going to add you laughing to this. Was Paul Rodriguez at the pool hall? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, bud. Comedy is an exaggeration. No, so you're telling me that no, the wait. guy at the pool hall told you that Paul Rod- paper wadded up is better than pussy? <laughs> Paul Rodriguez sold me coke is what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> no, 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 the man's got to make a living. No, I, uh, I, I went. You guys knew that. This is how nice uh, Saga and Norm are. You guys knew that I'd been in jail. For possession of cocaine, and you knew that I had. Hell, a- hell yeah! And and I told you I was clean. Everything's fine. 
Right, and I, I, had been, I, I, I had tried it years before and was hoping to get back into it through you. Right, well, listen, I mean, I got better shit than you did, probably. What could Coulier get? Mine was and terrible. Look how thin I was. Did, <laughs> did Coulier ever, did Coulier, did Coulier ever uh, try to score Coke as, as Popeye? No, no, <laughs> no. There was no smoking Coke back in the day. We didn't, we didn't live like smart people in the hood. We that were just, be, uh, we would just put it up our little bouffant noses. In are the you 80s. telling me the Olsen twins are the only people who did blow on that side? I don't think that they could touch it. There were nine when they went off the By air. By the way, Saget, when, when the Olsen twins are in town, it's like the president with Saget. He said, yeah, we, was gonna, we were going to have lunch, and he said, listen, uh, somebody's in town again. I can't tell you what it is, but I, uh, I have to go see them. They, they summoned me. I said, what do you mean? I go, can I come? Like, no, 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 no. I didn't say he summoned me. They don't know. Well, that's what it seemed like. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> she fit you in in between who? Heath Ledger and... Anyway. Oh, I, uh, that, that, that's sweet. That's listen, really sweet. By the way, I you can't look, condemn you, though, because you're, you're the man that's come through the middle of the groundhog hole and out. I'm, I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to compliment First thing, you're invincible is what I love about you. You know, I, I survived. Uh, that You're right, I survived. You survived weekly. Blow, <laughs> blow a saga directed film. <laughs> No, I'm, way, trying to, I'm trying to I'm to compliment favorite. you. Listen, so it's, I met. I thought I met the nicest person in the world when I met Bob Saget, but I didn't. I'm, his parents were the nice. Uh, d- 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 by that's the way, actually true. They loved you. Artie. Oh my God, were they sweet people? Yeah, and I you mean, know you're responsible for their death. <laughs> that's what the Farley brothers say. And I, I, listen, I I'm trying to say through all these stupid jokes that Bob Saget might be the most supportive guy I've ever known in show business. He's never not had a kind word, a warm. You know, right, right before he tells me I, I suck uh, minority cock, but uh, that's his way of complimenting it. He uh, he's just well, the sweetest, you, the sweetest guy. He, he makes sure like, and it's it's you could tell it's genuine. And my God, d- d- your parents might have been. I mean, your father was so nice to me. It was like right, like, but my dad was like Willie Loman, so you know he was just nice because he was a total loser. Well, thank God you're not Biff. <laughs> Thank God Biff got on Full House. My dad is not a loser. And Biff, Biff is the best. Who was it? Come on, Ola, stop saying that about your father. The best is Lenny and Mice and Men. That's the best. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, my, dad, my dad was a, a spectacular guy. Could have been a comedian and just loved you. You're the kind of guy that everybody loves. By yeah, the way. well, I mean, I don't And that's know. why everybody roots for you and everybody gets pissed off and upset. Yeah. yeah. And I'm always trying to reach out to you, but you change your number more than people change their returnable bottles. Like <laughs> <laughs> Let me run these down to the Seven Eleven to get a nickel a bottle. You, well, you, got, uh, a you got a fucking different number every ten well, minutes. Well, do you do you want do you want to have my number, or do you want me to be? Uh... I got your number, but I but I got your sister's number too. But I'm not calling her because because I'd rather just get a hold of you somehow. Uh, the, the, the only I've way... always fi- I got sources now to find out what's really up with you. Okay, well, uh, don't call my sister too often. Unless, no, you, want, I, unless I, you want to I marry her. It's, it's just when I got that toilet paper balled up because there's nothing better than By the that. way, my sister, age appropriate, why don't you marry her? No, but I got a woman now. She's a woman. I fi- I'm finally dating a woman, Artie. Oh, yeah? Oh, no. What do you she's mean? A woman. Woman. She's a she's, woman. She's 37. Well, that's, that's the thing. I, I also told Bob that his daughters were nice, and then he said, that's my girlfriend. About 14. <laughs> no, but that's when they're all doing a totem pole on top of each other. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I can they tell... Look, they look real tall like the Three Stooges of the Carter <laughs> Marx Brothers when they're trying to sneak into a room with a blanket. <laughs> them. Listen, but so me and Gilbert are talking about the Marx Brothers. Okay, Groucho was a womanizing smoker. Harpo yes. made fun of moots, moots, mutes. And of course, uh, of course, Chico was anti-Italian. The only guy in the Marx Brothers who could get a development deal is Zeppo right now. <laughs> Right, and all he, got, all he got is a crappy lighter. <laughs> <laughs> How was he so unfunny? In that in that family, like, like well, he was supposed to be the the you know the the ingenue of the thing. He was the right. Peter Lawford of the Rat Pack, you know. That's the one you want to be. Yeah, that guess if you want to get laid or something or get in the White House. <laughs> you want to be in a Malibu guest house shitting your pants for bad coke. First thing, let's back it up a second. You sound you won't good. let me now, introduce you. How come you sound so good? What because everything you read about me is the- bullshit. It's all a hustle. Well, what, okay, so what, what, what do you take? Caffeine? Coffee? What helps you? You were in the toilet before I called. I'm working, uh, I'm, I'm working on a character, the most liberal character in the world, Ashley Judd Apatow. And we're gonna put, That's put a it good on. title. That's funny. Uh, now, Have you been shooting that show more? You're so good on it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Well, yes, you you know, had a hiatus. You had to take a hiatus. I said hiatus. <laughs> you no, said that right into my butthole once. It made me <laughs> happy. <laughs> Saget so got hiatus. a lot of pussy, man. Did you fuck the chick in Dirty Work? Did you fuck her? No. Uh, 
In, uh, we, by anybody. the way, uh, I was just, I was very, very lonely. Whose nickname, had, whose nickname? Was my, I was divorced. You know, no, I was not divorced. You were my getting divorce a divorce, paper. which seemed very pleasant. The nickname uh, we gave her was In, your tra- in My Trailer, Howard. <laughs> no, God. no, and she had a boyfriend. So that I know, was, he's very, he's very sweet. Uh, she walked up to Jack Warden and said, that, hey, Jack, uh, my boyfriend wrote uh, uh, Things Do in Denver When You're Dead. And Jack Warden looked at her like, your boyfriend wrote one of the 50,000 movies I've been in? Wow. Can I get back to my sandwich? I actually saw her recently, and she uh, has a kid, and she's happy, and she's sweet. She was she's beautiful. Sweet. She was a beautiful girl, and a bit of a... Well, and, she, and she was good in the movie. The movie worked. You were hilarious in the movie. I don't remember her. I don't remember her in the film. Hole. I don't remember her in the film. <laughs> I, 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 you remember the film. I don't remember her in the film. <laughs> now, now uh, did you, were you responsible for the prosthetics of Farley's nose? Uh, no. You let me tell you uh, something. Again, I can't get a compliment world. out because I I, 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 you know, I feel about your dad. Saget, people love that movie. They love it. I just and it has actually become more of a cult favorite. Uh, and I'm getting out of director jail. I'm directing in July a movie. That, that's acting. what I mean. You know what pisses me off? How come after watching Dirty Work? First of all, we made a rated R film, and then of course I got and then they cut six minutes out, especially with the donuts on the dick. That I know the that that's the reason Chevy Chase did the movie, which you know, lucky there. But uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, nothing can help us but turn into Rickles at some point. Oh my you know, god! You know, oh. That's why Chevy Chase did the movie. Uh, lucky there, I was uh, Carson. <laughs> do you re- do you realize that Don Rickles? It's that uh, Dirty Work's the only movie where he really does him. He's never well, himself. I, and I got. And by the way, I got in trouble because I fought for that, and I said, "Let's roll." Just roll on him and let him make it up. Right. And everybody got mad at me. The producer got mad at me. They said, you've used all the film budget, film stock budget, which, of course, doesn't they, There is no more film stock. We do. You know, you used the week's film budget just on Don Rickles. And then... And then That's the what the director, movie should have been, by the way. The producer said to the editor, do you think we could save this? And I'm like, I know what I'm doing. I can right. edit it at home. But they, By the way, I, 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 everybody who's worked on Spielberg sets, they always hear him saying, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, I You should have gotten a bunch of Jim, comedies Jimmy after Spielberg. that. You should have gotten a bunch of comedies after that because you know, the only thing you don't direct well is when I moon the people. In, in the first shot, we go way past the uh, parking meter. And then in the shot, the close-up, we hit the parking meter. I actually think um, it was perfect because I made sure that you had no TP coming out of your butt. You did not have a hemorrhoid. There was no black residue around your butt crack. <laughs> there was a little bit of a hairy ass. It, it was cut really quickly. We pulled up fast. Um, <laughs> we and up. you we were spectacular. Up Give me your thoughts on Bill O'Reilly. To what? Bill O'Reilly. Your thoughts on Bill O'Reilly, the scandal uh, where supposedly he's been rude to women. Yeah, that's a shock, isn't it? <laughs> Are you I can't a- believe what's going on in the world because it's all been so perfect up till now. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, did you vote for Trump? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was first in line. I voted to take it off of my uh, American Express dossier as a hotel possibility. <laughs> I just Honestly. want to see the signs come down and have Intercontinental go up. You want to direct that movie, you better say no. <laughs> I want to play him. I want to play his ball hair. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd be good at that. Yeah. Now, so so I just recently... They actually call his penis a trumpet. <laughs> Is that disrespectful if it's the president? How about hookers have changed bumpkins to trumpkins in New York? <laughs> They should have a pissing contest with him. Uh, you know, when they would say to him, I don't want to get in a pissing contest with you, he actually can follow through. <laughs> Do you know why you can't get laughs out of sight? Because he's always thinking of the next joke he's going to make. That is not true. That's that that is, is not true. You're like a Friars Club audience. You're like a Freddie Roman. That's funny. That's funny. That- Dear Artie, I am in the moment, and other people do that, but I, I am with you exactly at that moment. <laughs> no, you, I, again, my, my mother... I'm sorry, I'm thinking of something about, I'm about to say, I'm sorry. My mother and I... I can't I, talk to you right now, I'm thinking of something. Like I'll, be, like I'll be at fucking uh, the Yaya Hut. What are you <laughs> doing on the road? You got a billion dollars. What are you doing? I'm doing, I'm uh, getting a special together, because oh. I got... I have a whole lot of news. I'm talking about my mom passing away. That's uh, a big that, laugh. That, again, like, you know, so your mom, I know she was probably so, you know, a wonderful life, probably very old, right? Yeah, she was 89. I could have used her a little longer. Yeah. I know. I, I, they were such, man, they're such great people. And you know what else was great? Uh, the guy who uh, was involved, uh, the, uh, the the producer was involved with the money, whoever he was, he was very nice, too. What was that guy's which, name? Which guy? The guy who, uh, you know, told us that we were running late all the time. 
What was oh, name? oh, Martin. Yeah, Martin. He was. Yeah, he, he was a big fan of mine. Yeah, you're, you, him and your parents were very. Smart. But I don't know how he could be a big fan of mine because he actually worked with the, the, one of the best filmmakers of all time, Sidney Lumet. So he was the production manager for what for, Dog Day Afternoon. Yeah, everything. He worked on like twenty Sidney Lumet. Well, he's one of those guys. And all of a sudden, he had Bob Saget on the set doing dirty work. So well, is like, it, well, let me tell you something. Is he one of those guys who, like, you know, he says I work with Sidney Lumet, and then the only one was that Sharon Stone movie or something like. He's, <laughs> none of the good ones. None of the good no, ones. No, he did. He did a few of them. I saw his How name. About, on a uh, Don I actually, I actually went back and photoshopped a bunch of movies and took his name off of them. <laughs> <laughs> Don Rickles, by the way, meet Saget. We're up in Toronto at six in the morning. And Rickles sees, what What are you doing? Uh, Bob, nice to meet you. Listen, I saw Martin Scorsese. I said, Marty, Bob Saget's directing a film. The man grabbed his chest. <laughs> what are you doing? On. What are you doing in Canada? You're a Jew. Go back to that show. A cat shit himself. You get a million dollars. Right. He goes on Leno. And Leno goes, how's it going? He says, I'm doing great. He goes, I, I did Casino with Martin Scorsese. I'm doing dirty work with Bob Saget. My career's doing great. <laughs> Well, uh, I, me and Norm are the only two people who have ever seen uh, Jack Warden get acting notes because uh, Saget gave them to him. I did, and, and he was he was uh, at the point where he was just starting to get older. <laughs> Jack he was Warden. starting to get older. He's amazing and, uh, in the movie. Jack Warden said, is this a Carrot Top film? No. <laughs> you know, Norm has a uh, sequel that he wants to do. I've come up with the premise for Dirty Work too. I already know what it is. What is it? Well, so, I hope it's Cindy Lamette Rex. Because <laughs> the beginning of it, you might not like the punchline. But the beginning, it, Norm and I went to lunch like two years ago. It says, Dirty Work 2, in parentheses underneath it, keep Artie alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I'm in the title. The, the, uh, Cut down on the ham, Sam. Well, the, the, the idea being that you need the operation that Pops needed. Oh, great. And so, can I sit in the bed the whole shoot? So we, we get you, we, we got to get you a heart. We got to get you a heart. So, uh Norm goes out doing more dastardly deeds. And, How about you uh, cut the Norm in the in the woods cutting out a pig's heart? <laughs> <laughs> it's I, just Norm Norm's expression of grunting and and have you ever seen this bit about um, uh, having a gerbil up his ass? Have you ever seen that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a lovely thing to watch. His face is so gracious and beautiful. But uh, you know, uh, Wendy Liebman is suing him because that's her bit. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy uh, Lehman sues by, over gerbil and ass pit. By the way, I don't think you'll disagree with me. He is one of the funniest people on this planet. Uh, who? Uh, Wendy Lehman? Norm McDonald. <laughs> Wendy Lehman. Norm Judy is Gold. Norm is the smart, uh, smartest and funniest. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. I would I would say that that is true. I cannot watch him without going. Holy shit! I don't know what's going to happen next. No, and, I know. He's dangerous. And, That's and, what comics uh, are nowadays. They're not, they're, and they're not you dangerous. have an ability to be honest in a way. That is the reason you're here. Well, let's get it's to the, let's get reason, to that. You could reason. play you could play me in the next uh, film. By the way, I'm looking at a picture of you. What the hell happened? Did you well, how stung, am I going to do it? Did you get stung by a bee? <laughs> is that what it's about? Guess, you look I very guess. heavy. I get what? what, what you what look picture? fat. You look. You're not Bob Saget. In what picture? I'm looking at a picture from uh, January 18, 2017. You're at the People's Choice the uh, People's Choice Awards. I call them the PCAs. Well, it and depends I, on how you film me. Sometimes I look bloated. Why did you, you do look bloated here? Yeah, I look pretty thin otherwise. You know what you look right like? Now. You look like uh, the chick who was married to Paul Newman when she had cancer to the steroids. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I look like. <laughs> no, I'm looking pretty good. You, you look, look like Barbara her, Hershey you, now. Look at, her, look at her. That's what I have in my ass right now. But if you look, <laughs> if you look at a picture of me on on whatever I post, I, I look like I look. So my favorite joke. I go I go up and down. You know, I get. Uh, I get a little bloaty sometimes. That's what Antonio Banderas says. That, yeah, absolutely. Sag, you got goes, an answer. Sag goes up and down. He's a puss in the boots. Thinking, you're thinking of the punchline before I am, it sounds like. But I'm doing a line before I am. <laughs> but by the way, uh, what? your I, acting on on uh, on that show is just thank uh, you. fantastic. Well, thank you. It's very real. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, now, how, now, all your listeners care about you. They all want you alive. They're all rooting for all you. All four of them. No, you got a lot. Of you're not going to see a bump in Twitter followers after this. But well, that's why you do it. I'm not going to post it because you told me I look fat, it. so why the fuck would I post it? See, Saga keeps his word. Saga is an actual, unless this is... I have actually lost weight. Is I this... lost two ounces before when I... Oh, you know, what? I'm so, you know what? I'm looking at Frank Caliendo doing you. That's what it was. I lost four ounces in, in a girl's mouth a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yes! And Richard Simmons found it. 
<laughs> I, 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 I am. Uh, have you? I, have you? Do you still have? I those? have nothing but affection for you, and um, and remember you, when it was? It was very funny. You were you in the Gilbert. Right. You were very good in the Gilbert Godfrey documentary. I, I haven't it. seen it yet. I watched it. It was sent to me by the filmmaker. We'll be we'll be, we'll promote it because it's going to do a whole Tribeca Film Festival. Are you thing. involved with it? I d- I did what you did. I did a little oh, interview okay. thing. But you're you're in it heavier than I am because you look so much better than I do. Cause <laughs> I'm so I'm so bloated. I look. Are like, you on steroids? No, I look like Shelley Winters as she floats to the top of the side <laughs> adventure. You look like John of the Winters. <laughs> yeah, I look like. <laughs> you're as funny as Shelley Winters. I look like the entire uh, Farley family put together. I want to try to do a. Pun- <laughs> I want to try to do a punchline. You're the fattest thing in Farley's uh, family, John Farley's cock. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. Remember when our senior hall used my trailer? By the way, let's talk serious for one second. How sad is it that we we lost Chris Farley? And that's fucking- that was like 15 years ago. Right. We could be sad about it. You know what? You know what? I, I, I hope the whore that fucking fucked him over is dead. <laughs> I don't know about that. There's always one, though, isn't there? There's all Belushi and him. How about Belushi and him, same age, 33, both SNL legends, both well, slightly, slightly and, overweight. And, right. And Sam Kennison had a truck hit him full on, so. Sam, well, now, do you think Sam Kennison could do his act today, particularly the Rock Hudson bit? Well, the way, the shape he's in right now, no. <laughs> do you remember what comics it, used to say? I mean, Sam Kennison well, had I, a bit I, where... I, I got him his first spot at the comedy store. I, I met him in Houston. And he had he had been banned from a club called the Comedy Works. And what he did was he chained himself. He said, "Sagan, I want to talk to you." He come to story is such bullshit. Club there. <laughs> no, this is the truth. He claimed he chained himself. I'm gonna tell, I met Chaplin at Chasen's once. I get that. Do, do you want me not to finish? I don't have to tell the story. No, go ahead. Well, you tell it anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. I'm about, no, okay. t- I want to hear this. This. Uh, this isn't match game. It's you and me talking. <laughs> so Sam McKenna's chained to what? He chained himself to a telephone pole because they wouldn't let him work there because he was doing a lot of Jesus material and talking about trying to analyze the faith healing, you know, dog and pony. He had the best Jesus stuff, like the Friday, Good Friday stuff. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable. And he put himself in a diaper and a crown of thorns and said that he was being persecuted like Jesus. Are you kidding me? This was before he was was famous? It was in the Houston Chronicle. This is before he came to L.A. It was right after he finished doing the shows. You know, George Foreman has the same story. Yeah, and and he had a grill strapped to his head. (laughs) See, there you go. There you go. Sam came out to L.A. Rodney saw him. Mitzi saw him. And uh, the rest was, uh, he was just. Now, did Paulie Paulie think he was ready for the store? (laughs) <laughs> Paulie saw me do a set of the belly room. I'm, I'm, I'm a regular on Mad TV. I'm a, a regular in every club in New York. And uh, Paulie sees me and goes, you're not ready for the store, buddy. Oh, my God. Is that true? That's true. He goes, hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, buddy. Uh, Did you see his I last to special? I there for nothing for 10 years while everybody went off and got a show. And Did I see? just sat there. No, but you've gone off and you had two with number one shows at once. It took 10 years. Uh, no, I worked for, I worked oh, for sorry. What do you, what you want to pull in the town and go, hey, where do I, what lot do I go to? <laughs> It took 13 years for me to get two shows, and then uh, my sister died, and I got divorced, and a bunch of shit happened. You've been through a lot of tragedy. You yeah. really have. I mean, yeah, that's uh, only that's the only thing that gets people to like me. What's a bigger tragedy, the death in your family, or Chris Penn saying no to dirty work? <laughs> <laughs> I want him. I want. I want to make Mike Pence watch dirty work. <laughs> 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 I think they need to show it at the White House. <laughs> right, let me tell you something. <laughs> Mike Pence. You know, you, know, you know what their favorite scene will be is is uh, when you're pissing off a building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you bastard. My favorite is Farley with the take. You <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Let's just tell the people what, because people will be listening to this. You do have people that love you already. Yeah, and, like, uh, like who? Yeah, I don't know. Paulie Shore ain't one of them. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, his name is Jimmy. But uh, there's a <laughs> Fallon there's or a, Kimmel. There's a scene which is an old practical joke, which was put in the movie, written by Norm and Frank Sebastiano and Fred Wolf. And the scene was uh, these these frat guys that we were harassing, and you guys wanted to fuck them over. And so what you did was you took a box of donuts. Right. And you deliver it to the house. The guys open up the donuts. They're loving the donuts, which is funny in itself. Absolutely. And then they get to the bottom, and it's a Polaroid picture, and you and Norm are naked with donuts on your dick. Yeah. So they've been eating your dick. Donut. And that's the first and thing we you, shot. Marty, you, this is my directing talent. I gave you three donuts, and I gave Norm six donuts. And the way to do it, we had no money. It was do- dowels, wooden dowels, strapped with flesh to your... Yeah. I had, we had to ta- I had First to of all, no money. You had the budget in your pocket. 
I actually love taking that picture, by the way. You know, yeah, there's always donuts, and that's and Chevy Chase loved that joke. So, but why three donuts? They were thick though, and they were and they were double chocolate. No, well, that's because you'd had them inside Norm. You know what? Let me tell you something. The worst thing that the worst thing that Frank, Fred, and Norm wrote in that script that got cut out was directed by Todd Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you also simultaneously, Half-Baked, was being filmed in Toronto. Right, and, so I, did, uh, I went over and did a cameo By the there. same producer. And, yep. uh, and you went over, and what is your line at? You have, it's one of the funny, biggest laughs in the history of movies. Yeah, well, not in the history of movies. It is. I, I think as God is my witness, I'm never going to go hungry again is the biggest laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, my I, damn... I, I uh, stood up and Dave Chappelle said he's hooked on marijuana, and I said, marijuana is not a drug. I used to suck dick for coke. <laughs> and then the comedian, Dave Edwards, was it Edwards or Edmonds? Do you remember? I have no idea. He goes, I've seen him. That's funny. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> was he African-American? Uh, yes, he was. <laughs> now, uh, now yeah, we both uh, we, we, we shot, shot those films. The great thing about Toronto is my favorite story ever is we dirtied up a street to look like New York. We went to lunch and the, Toronto cleaned the street. <laughs> yeah. We got back and looked to it wasn't dirty like New York. Uh, no, the sweetest thing was I have photos. I was just looking through the other day because I've been kind of going through. I'm doing another scleroderma benefit because one of my sisters died from that. Uh, so we, I've been, uh, we raised forty million dollars in twenty five years. Explain what and, that is. And we're going to make the sequel to Dirty Work with the money we raised. Well, how much you like? Now, did Jerry Lewis tell you how to uh, no, clean, you don't clean do that money? Fun. You take the money and you don't give it to Jerry. Here's what you, you do. You, <laughs> you don't give money to a guy that goes flagging. You don't. <laughs> stuff, you, Guy you directed don't cure a disease with the guy that goes, "Oh, lady." Guy directed uh, like eighty billion dollars for sprained ankles. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was uh, now to uh, track. Well, what is that disease? It's a skin disease. It right? is a hardening of the skin, no. which I like to have happen personally. But my sister was dating a guy who had a similar had a blackening of the skin, and we got rid of him. <laughs> Oh. Well, that's uh, yeah, that's that's upsetting thing to get. There's an opposite. It's too. This disease is too much collagen. It affects mostly women, and it's a tragic, tragic thing. It's and, terrible. Uh, Robin Williams has done the benefits, did the benefits. Seven well, that worked times. out for him. Oh God! Now, that, you, did that, you know Robin? A, did you know Robin? That's a, that's a big fucking loss. Yeah, he was a friend of mine. That, yeah. That's that's one of the. How about divorce? How evil is it? Everybody's got a divorce. The, the guy who did Mork and Mindy was happy every fucking day going to a, a goddamn uh, set where his comic foil was Pam Dauber. He was happy every day, and then two divorces, and he, put, he ties a scarf around his neck. Well, uh, that's not what happened, and you know that. What was, happened? What happened was um, he. he <sighs> You know, it was a medical thing. It was a. It was oh, well, a, I know. He, he well, I suppose he had a. But he, he, had, he had a depression thing, and, and we oh, know depression. That, we know that thirty percent of the people in this country are on some kind of medical meds, and yeah. that's why you're watching stuff and half the shit. And I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to all of us. Are you a? You know, you, well, you never had it manifest itself like I did. You're no, a, I had a person. lot of stuff. I had a sister at thirty four. Uh, died. That's and, terrible. That is. I mean, look at the tragedy. But you had, you're she, actually an amazing story. Of, and she she died of um, a lot of mental health issues. And uh, oh, oh. So, so we went. But wait a minute. A so stuff. two sisters passed away. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. That I'm really is. Have, terrible. I'm hoping to bring my parents back so I could make them fuck and have more sisters. Now, do you feel? I'm going to just ignore that. Do you feel that uh, there's that the, I have a curse? There's an afterlife. Well, oh, there's an afterbirth. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, if you could stop, if you could, let, let, let's just talk serious. It's just me and you. Dan, you know, Dan you, turn you, off those. Do you think there's an afterlife? Because I'll answer. I'm living it. You. I'm living it, pal. <laughs> right, I, you're, I, you're in it right now because you're you're saying. You're I owe deed. You're, you're, you're a miracle incarnate, especially given even the past two fucking weeks, you're a miracle incarnate. Correct. Sure. Let me blow my nose. <laughs> yes. No. How much I, was that? Uh, you just blew your nose. How much was that worth just now? Enough to get me three to five. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, 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 I I I over OD'd on bad coke and Jack Daniels at uh, the Oakwood Apartments in North Hollywood when I was 28 years old. I was late for a sketch with Harry Connick Jr. in it uh, at uh, Mad TV. Some people said that, that had to do with the OD. Artie, but, uh, is it always in success that this happens to you? I Think woke up. I, you're right. I'm afraid of success. Which is why, it, it, which is why it, I'm it fine is with always Hollywood. when something great happens to you. <laughs> Say that. I, I missed that. Sorry. Of course, because you were saying something else that you thought of. I said I am afraid of success, which is why I'm comfortable with having you on the show. 
because <laughs> I will never be you success again. <laughs> Did you hear about the, that the Pope, when he visited a couple summers ago, he was uh, upset that he missed the World Series, and they explained it was in October, and he said, no, the Little League World Series. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what are you, what are you, do you have new material? You have all new material. Do you work with yeah, the- I have, I, I, I'm more spoken word. I'm, I'm doing <laughs> spoken word. Oh, that's I'm, good. I'm doing a lot of mime. I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we get a reading of Dirty Work together, like a cast, like they do it a well, comedy, I, I don't, comedy, I don't, like Michael Fassbender could play me. Uh, that'd be awesome. You'd have the biggest cock you'd ever dreamed of. <laughs> How about uh, I, I? I said I was Steve Jobs' brother, Bo. And I, uh, you can him. play Steve Jobs. <laughs> you can play any. You can play Blow Jobs. <laughs> I think uh, I don't know. I don't know if we have a reading of it. I think we should maybe. I don't know. Somebody hold on, write hold it. line for a second. I mean, Norm could sit down and start writing it. Get you know writing. why I want to do that? Because I've never read the script. <laughs> you never read Dirty Work? Yeah, but I'll tell you why. So my agent calls me up and says, Oh, you Listen, learned it phonetically. No, you? My agent calls me up and says, Norm MacDonald wants you to be in a movie. It's a buddy comedy. You're the buddy, the second lead, Saget's directing, Chris Farley, blah, blah. And I'm going to go, what, am I not going to do it? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was about to drive a cab. And, and and I get to work with all these funny people. I, I, I met you. I met Norm Farley. Adam Sandler came up for a little while. I got funnier. I got. A, I became a funnier person because I met all you guys. Then I met John Stamos, and I became a way less funny person. <laughs> well, it's hard. He's he's so hot. There was. Uh, do you think? Uh, do you think anybody banged uh, Rebecca Romaine while uh, Stamos was on the set? No, not she even that midget. Bearded, she played a bearded lady. We, she, we, he was fine that week. <laughs> do you remember? Do you rem- <laughs> Do you remember the midget joke that somebody made in the front office about the call sheet? It said it just said midget eight eight a.m. No, and the, the no, mid- I, you don't remember it, that? It, the, it, okay, midget, did it? It, it said midget. So the agent of the midget, the midget calls his agent. This is a true story. That was a Canadian mistake. Paul something. And, okay, somebody in the front office was the funniest guy ever because the agent screamed at Bobby Simon, said, you know, he's the producer. He's a, he's a person like Norm. He has a name like Artie. Has, the next day, the next day, it says Paul the midget. <laughs> I, 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 it, you, you don't even aware of that. I, I That's a true clue. story. Paul the midget. It's he a, was very good, by the way. It was a, it was that whole circus thing, and, and uh, well, midgets, yeah. pro, midgets protested the the film, but uh, you just uh, tilted a little up, and you couldn't see the signs. <laughs> That's not true, but it would have helped us press wise. Any kind of controversy. How about the we fact knew, that I, all these stu- all these college kids from like all these schools, like Ivy League schools, they were at the film at the uh, screening of this when I uh, for Vanity Fair, which calls it a cult classic. Where were you? they just they just did that recently? Where yeah. were you? Party when the movie premiered. Where did you go that night? Same place I was when Kennedy got assassinated. <laughs> Where? Uh, uh, is Kennedy from Fox News dead? <laughs> no. Uh, I. Uh, where was I? I was. Uh, you were on the grassy knoll. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was with Chuck Knoll. No. I. Uh, let me tell you something. I was in the rehab. No. I. W- I was in rehab. You yep. were in rehab. I was. That when when it, well, the Norm day and I had been we'd been editing the movie. We, right. uh Chris Farley's tragically passed away. He passed I, away. I had, yeah. I had just gotten divorced. I couldn't go to the funeral. I was having like a nervous breakdown on my own. Yeah. We went to the, the movie came out. It opened on a Saturday. We knew MGM was really behind it because all the posters said coming soon. Right. <laughs> by the way, uh, by the way, I heard, this whole, I heard this whole story on AMC, but the guy. <laughs> right. You, could, you told it to like dinner and a movie or whatever it's called. <laughs> So then, so then uh, we went to like ten theaters in L.A. Norm and I, we just went theater to theater. And went, we got a hit, brother. We got a hit, and we're like, we're this like. Were you looking at the Were you looking rolling. at the Godzilla numbers? <laughs> what? Were you looking at the Godzilla numbers? Yeah, exactly. We're up against Godzilla. Simon goes. We were on. also on against Michael Jordan's last two games with the Bulls. That's right. Which I lost money. I lost money on Dirty Work in that. And we were fi- <laughs> exactly. We and we were a fifteen-year-old boys' movie, and so that was the. <laughs> you don't put us against Michael Jordan. No. But they they didn't know. They didn't care. But anyway. But then I got the phone call from the producer the next morning, and it was like, and I don't know nothing about tracking or anything. It you tells, don't? You you're, tells you you're dead. I get a phone call. He goes, sorry, buddy, didn't work out. Take care. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, I couldn't get Bob Simons on the phone after that. Uh, he was doing Problem Child 6, the moneymaker. Yeah. Can I tell you the greatest story, though? Norm asked me to come help watch Farley. when he, In between uh, dying and dirty work, he hosted Saturday Night Live. And he was a little out of control. So Norm said, "You got to come to the after party and help me watch Farley." That, that's how bad he was. I was watching him. That's and when he could. That's when he couldn't breathe. That's Andy Dick. It was. It was terrible. Andy Dick uh, and Farley. I'm watching him for Norm, and uh, 
They disappear. Andy Dick's always good to have around his moral support. <laughs> they disappear in the bathroom, okay? They come out five minutes later giggling. I, Norm, this is how funny Norm is. Norm comes back. I go, Norm, bad news, man. He goes, what? Because I just saw Farley and Andy Dick go in the bathroom for five minutes and come out like giggling. I said, listen, there's only two reasons a guy goes in the bathroom with Andy Dick, and neither one of them are good. And Norm, without missing a beat, goes, holy fuck, I hope he's high. <laughs> <laughs> And good news. Oh, it's so sad. It is. So sad. How, how, you know, he was 33 when he died. You know how much more funny that guy had left of him? Well, we were talking. He and I were talking. I said, you got to be in Breakfast at Champions. You're like the only person I could think that could play that part. The Kurt Vonnegut book? Yeah. You don't think Bruce Willis nailed that? <laughs> Wasn't he in that? I just cared about the catering. That's all. He should have been in Confederacy of Dunces. And did you want to direct? Yeah, Conf- Confederacy of Dunces is correct. You're did right. You, did you want to do another film with Chris? I, yeah, I wanted to do anything with Chris. Yeah. I, Chris was a great actor. Chris he was really a great was. Guy. Chris was running from the devil. You run from the devil, whatever. You know, people I run know. from our devils. I run from my fucking devils. I mean, it's you know, right. I look like a guy that you'd like your dentist, but I got the same shit. I don't I think about killing myself. <laughs> I got three kids that I do. Love, you think so. if you turned out to be a dentist, by the way, and that's and your children. I would one, the, one if people. I was a dentist, I'd drill the fuck out of you. <laughs> And I would go through your mouth. I had a dentist. The long, when I was a longshoreman working at the port in Newark, we had a, a union dentist. And I got sent there. True story. The guy, first of all, the lab coat couldn't fit over his gut. He had like a big bear gut. And it didn't fit him. And he puts his knee in my chest. And he's got like a drill. Like he's going to like drill a cabin. I go, what are you doing? And quote from my dentist at the longshoreman uh, the, for the union. He goes, come on, come on. what are you, a pansy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He goes, I, I, a pansy? What guy's dentist? wearing a pea coat while he's drilling you. I, did you that Letterman had that old bit. The NBC nurse was a big fat guy with a bad attitude. At the, <laughs> and Letterman went down to the NBC nurse, and the guy goes, what's the matter with you, Letterman? Would you hurt your back carrying all your money? <laughs> <laughs> now, what about Letterman? Do you have a, do you have a good uh, a rapport with him? Off, uh, I no? did. I did. I did the show like 13 times. Yeah, but off, like off uh, camera. No one, he was an, an enigma and still is. Did you have a relationship? Well, I knew him from uh, when I started at the comedy store he was one of the first MCs that brought me up and he had dated a cousin of mine who's since passed away no kidding and I told him I said oh my cousin if you want you can fuck her and uh, <laughs> and he Thanks. he just he just thought that was the funniest thing he'd ever heard <laughs> here's, a, here's this 20 year old kid coming up to him with a bouffant I got a bouffant hairdo I mean they look like my mom you I said that to him at 20 years old yeah and, 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 and I said you can you can Bang my cousin, and and he he, he gave me great advice. Letterman gave with her. I mean, he didn't do anything. Did he fuck her? No, I don't. I don't think so. Letterman but, gave uh, uh, Letterman gave me great show business advice, though. I told him, you know, you were calling me, and he said, "Change your number." <laughs> 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 he couldn't. He could not have been nicer to me, and he liked dirty work. Also, he talked about it quite a yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Whatever. And he talked about Farley. I, I got news for you. He didn't get through the opening credits of Dirty Work. <laughs> no, I, I don't. He's know a hateful. He's a hateful said, man. He said he liked it, and he used to say he used to watch this. Now, stuff what about there. Stern? That scumbag. Do you still talk to him about me? Um, I haven't talked to him in a long time. Yeah, and he's uh, not but, your but friend. How do you, but how do you feel about him? <laughs> he's not your friend. I'm telling you right now, he's not your friend. Uh, I mean, and you go on that show. You're always hilarious on that show. And, I haven't been on it in a long time. And, oh wait, uh, is it, oh wait. And I had a book to sell, and you know, we, and he, we he, he, these, he, we he didn't have you on. Did he have you on? No. You know why? Because Chelsea Handler's on there. Your thoughts on Chelsea Handler? Real quick. Well, it, you know, it is a farewell business. It is a, uh, you know, it's how hot you are at the moment. I've got some good stuff happening now, so that's... You uh, always have good stuff happening. You're, you're always, you've been a celebrity forever because you're fucking likable, you're funny, people love you. You, ha- you have all the qualities of your dad, but, you know, you're not Willie Loman, you're, you're Biff Loman. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Shrimp Loman. Was your father really a salesman? Is that true? I bet he was. No, a- he was a f- uh, food guy. He was a meathead. He was an executive of meat. I can't see how somebody wouldn't, uh, wouldn't love that guy. I really, I really don't. He know. was very, very lovable. He looked like Boris Badenoff, but taller. <laughs> he, had, he had a mustache like somebody from some silent film error, he and did. he would just smile and make perverted comments. Right. And he totally fucked me up as a human being. So he's you with a mustache? Uh, I was the mustache. I was the beard. No, my mother was, was the beard. Was he a bad? <laughs> was he a bad um a father? He, my father said, was the best lay I ever had. <laughs> My father was not, he would come up to my room, my dad, and if I said something wrong, you know, he didn't spare the army. He would come up there, he took his belt off, and of course I had to blow him. 
No, no, no. But did he wrap the belt around his dick? <laughs> no, I wrapped, I wrapped the belt around my arm. You, how old were you when you lost your father? Uh... Well, in Little League, I lost him once, but we found him. Yeah, I, I did that joke, too, and nobody responded either. <laughs> I have the second joke book. I was, uh, well, he fell off a roof when I was 18 and became a quadriplegic. And uh, four and a half years later. That's time. true? Yes. Was he doing Broadway? Was it Fiddler? Yeah, by the way, I've told you fucking this 42 times. This is I, know, I, know, I know, I know. I've told you this. Is that true? Yeah. I, uh, yeah, and, he, and of course, we went on welfare because he had no insurance. He stole the ladder he fell off of. Did right. you read my book? Yes. <laughs> I how read about, it. Of course I read it. I'm how about this, dude? I'm looking at your picture. I'm a narcissist Jew. I read both your books. How about this, dude? How about this? Last narcissist Jew, Hitler. <laughs> By the way, uh, I read <laughs> I read both of your books. That's, that's, I, well, hold on. That's really good. Of course it's good. Well, well he's a, what is he, a quarter Jew, Hitler? He was. His mother was Jewish. He's a fucking, he's his like. His mother uh, wasn't Jewish. He's like he, Simon he's Wiesenthal. A quarter, he's a quarter Jew. <laughs> he's Simon Wiesenthal. All right. You know, a quarter Jew, four quarters is a dollar. That's how a Jew looks at life. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do that, but I want to work. Listen, how about this? <laughs> well, you want to work? That's going to keep you from working where? On a um, cruise? No, I don't want your David Geffen to hear that one. How about this? I, I would do that joke, but I wouldn't work. I'm looking at your picture, and you here's your book, Too Fat for Full House. Oh, God. Will you stop it looking at another picture? Too Will you look at any other picture? You look like dude, you look heavy. My look buddy at Timmy. my last tweet or whatever the Timmy. fuck. Look at my Instagram. I look fine. How many Twitter followers do you have? It depends. Huh? <laughs> I got two and a half million. That's amazing. Now, how many of them are over six? All of them are fat, not <laughs> weak. And six? You're fat no, shaming. They're, no, they're all uh, spam bots. Did you, ever see, all, uh, did you ever see John Stamos fuck a chick? Uh, no. No. Not unless you include, include my butthole. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever, like, you know, go out after a taping and just go, like, around Burbank there and fuck broads? Or, yeah, that's what you do. You go out at the smokehouse. <laughs> you just fuck people in the street. <laughs> you go to the smokehouse. What we would do is we would wait for the studio audience to cross Olive Avenue and uh, <laughs> Olive Avenue. How yeah, you? And you just go. You walk into the parking lot and you just stand there as people are leaving. You make them blow you. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing is more uh, happening than Burbank after a taping. I'm uh, doing a I'm doing a Fuller House episode next week. The show's <laughs> the number one show on Netflix. Apparently, do you get money for that? Well, no, I get food stamps. How about uh, Sagan is they the New Black? They smoked fish and a hand job. Sagan is the New Black. What about this? <laughs> you know, you go to the... In, in Burbank, you go bar hopping after a taping with the guy who played Bentley on the Jefferson. He was the most... <laughs> the most character actors were... Oh, but, he was uh, fantastic. How about this? Me and Norm were on the Warner Brothers set doing that sitcom. ER, Friends was next to us. Uh, right. And they would say all this. Uh, they, the, me and Norm would be playing football catch with a football outside our stage and it, the tour guide would come there's where they do friends that's er that's the drew cash <laughs> and me and norm they point to our stage and, go, and that's stage 12 <laughs> uh, yeah. that was a good show norm I th that, that should have been around were you on it i directed one of them that's right that was great it was Which nice. Was... I was going through a breakup. I think it's all I talked about all week. Okay, no. Your motivation is... Uh, Who's the chick we got? Let's tell the story about when you, we got the flat tire. That's uh, the best story that exists. Yeah. yeah the, I'm, I, I am still sorry about it, Artie. Well, no. Well, you, you never paid me, first of all. Yeah, uh, well, I, paid, I paid for the tire. What else do I owe you? I, you didn't pay for the tire. Yeah, I did. I paid the guy 800 bucks. You, you owe me a that. career. <laughs> I'm kidding. Now, how this, much do I owe you, Artie? Wait, how much is this interview going to cost? This cover. This will cover it. This interview covers it. Thank you. But uh, <laughs> I, I let me tell you. So I get a brand new Cadillac Eldorado, which is what all Gindaloons do when you get an extra money. That uh, was my first real car, and we're celebrating the movie, celebrating the uh, opening of the film. It came out. It opened. Uh, I think three million bucks it made. Right. Right. That's that's all total. <laughs> Norm, Norm would go. Norm would go on talk shows. It's a success, and he, they would go. Really? He'd go. Well, it made like a million dollars. <laughs> Well, I actually say that I, MGM wrote me a note that tells me I owe them thirty million personally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy at MGM, man, he—it uh, he, was a twelve million dollar movie, and it looks like twelve point two. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I get the car, and, and Norm and Saget are in uh, uh, New York. Who was that chick we got with? You were dating like an eighteen-year-old, and she was no. she was sassy. And I she, don't know. She had a good short know. game. 
And I, I, so we, co- we come back to New York and Sag goes, let me drive your new car. I'm like, okay. So we, we go off the West Side Highway on 56th Street, which is called Pothole Lane. And Sag is doing 100. I didn't know potholes. I didn't know families could live in them. <laughs> Sag is doing 100. And he hits a pothole, blows out my fucking tire. And he's all, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll pay for it. So a Puerto Rican guy drives by in a tow truck, which, of course, is the start of every great joke. And uh, there's, there's a Goodyear place right on 11th Avenue. And he sees us. I mean, it's literally like he's fishing. He's, he hangs out. He goes, I'll be right back. So he goes, I'll fix the tire. And uh, Sag goes, whatever it costs, no problem. So, so I go to an ATM and I get about 800 get, bucks. While that happens, while that happens, while you're at the ATM, Norm goes up to the Puerto Rican guy. No, Norm thinks of this. You come back with the money and you say, listen, the guy doesn't want any money to Puerto Rican. Really? He's a big fan of Full House. And he just wants you to sign a picture for his daughter. <laughs> For his, yeah. And uh, for his daughter. So you're like, of course. I, I, I'll, in a heartbeat, I would do that. So, of course. So the guy, knowing nothing of this, comes back to get paid. and uh, Sag I, give him, I give him the money. Sag, no, you didn't. You said, how much? So what's your daughter's name? <laughs> and he goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I said, I hear your, your, your daughter's a big fan. <laughs> and I wanted to give her, I'm going to sign a picture for her. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who you are, man. <laughs> I just want the eight hundred dollars. Just give me the eight hundred dollars. Apparently, he was out. And then I look over, and you and Norm are pounding the pavement, <laughs> laughing. You're, you're literally lit- rolling on the <laughs> sidewalk, laughing. <laughs> Me but I Norm- bottomed your fucking car out. I feel yeah. terrible. Me about and Norm it. were laughing like Harpo and Chico. A B the fish man. Hey. Oh my god, that was funny. And then uh, did you told. But how did your car operate after that? Because you had a new tire. Did I, it- well, it disappeared. Let's just put it that way. Your car disappeared. It disappeared. I made a few phone calls. I stayed in touch with the guy, though. I, I, <laughs> yeah, we actually did in uh, in Hillhurst, uh, New Jersey. We did West Side Story together. <laughs> you were a great Maria. Yeah, I loved her. I wanted to be Rita Moreno, but Rita insisted I'm playing it. I just met a man named Bob Saget. <laughs> <laughs> tonight, tonight. When you're a Jew, you're a Jew all the way. I think I go back to Full House. I want you on Fuller House. This, this what exists. is Fuller House? This show exists. What is Fuller House? Fuller House is the kids grew up. They're 40, and I'm I'm still on it. Good, good idea. How old Stamos? Stamos doing great. Is he in it? I talk to him all day. He's adorable. Is he in it? He is. What, he's, what? The re- he's one of the producers also. He's one of the reasons the thing got made. What is his public relations show? Jake's Choice didn't work? <laughs> he had a show uh, that was a good show called Grandfather that didn't last. No, he had a show where he plays a PR guy, too, a Puerto Rican. Yeah, that's gone. <laughs> but uh, he always He had worked. 52 t- uh, pilots. Best story he ever told on Stern. He said he, he was fucking Denise Richards. And uh, he took a, her kids were having a party. And he went in the balloon guy's truck. He snuck in the balloon guy's truck. <laughs> And he got out and fucked Denise Richards and got back in the truck. Oh, God. That true story? Yeah, that's he told it on Stern. And Denise Richards did it because, you know, it was a balloon truck. And <laughs> No, he told that on Stern. Bal- I was in a balloon accident once with my ex-wife <laughs> and my kids. <laughs> it looks and like your face was in a balloon accident. <laughs> and my parents, no, I'm not even, I had a balloon accident. And my pa- I had the same accident on a bus once, but... <laughs> But we, Do you remember but, Norm's story where he uh, he fucked a retarded chick and then put her on a bus to get rid of her, and he didn't know where the bus was going? No, wait a second. You can't call somebody a retarded chick. <laughs> he was he was sitting next to a retarded guy on a bus, he claimed, in Vancouver, and everybody was giving dirty looks. It was the 70s. He had that shirt on. I'm with stupid. <laughs> 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 oh, God. <laughs> uh, How do you get on a bus? You don't take a bus, do you? Uh, I used to. Until yeah. that Rosa Parks bullshit happened. I took a bus when I was in college at Temple University. How about this? I do a, a porno movie, an offensive a racial porno movie called Rosa Parks. Her her pussy on your face. Oh, God. Do, do I, I don't know what this, <laughs> I, I don't, What am I supposed to do right now? I'm so, you're supposed to tell an anecdote. Uh, well, the anecdote would be that in the back. If you sit in the back of the bus, you like it in the rear. No, <laughs> no, no. The premise is like she's sitting in the someone's sitting in the front of her, her pussy's in the front of the bus. You know what's great is that our government is moving us along just swimmingly. <laughs> now, what do you think about Trump? Uh, honestly, uh, did you go? To, did you go to that Hillary I, dinner? I, I honestly Clooney's? think what we all think, which is we don't want to be lied to. We've always been lied to. Right. Government lies. They do. News lies. And when you see someone say something, and it's. And it's completely inaccurate, and then they deny <laughs> saying it. It's like a nine-year-old. It's like just yeah. saying, I, "Where'd you?" My mother saying, "Where'd you get that toy gun?" Oh, I found it. <laughs> I mean, it it doesn't take 
a, a, a fucking seagull knows you're lying. Yeah. So. Well, he could be in a he could be in the Groundlings because he's great with 140 characters. Yes, he would. He would not use yes and. <laughs> I like watching him shake people's hands. That's uh, my favorite thing. He pulls people in like he's gonna well, fuck them. <laughs> I will admit, Artie, that the uh, I, I like getting my news from comedians, from the people that we know, from the people that we enjoy, <laughs> and, and I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying the relevance of. I never understood the government. I didn't know who was in the cabinet. Uh, obviously, they should all be in a cabinet and lock it up and drop it in the ocean. But, <laughs> but, but, the, but I never knew what all. I never knew anything. I was. I'm not a smart guy. I didn't know yes, political you, science. Come on, you're a smart guy. Well, I didn't know who was speaker of the house. I didn't know all the different little bullshit. No one. Things. No one. Tell, you told Shailene to sue uh, Brillstein, right? Say, say, say one more time. <laughs> Did you tell Shailene to sue Brillstein? That was a good move. Absolutely. Who are you more friends with, uh, Brad Gray or? Uh, or, or uh, Gary Shanley? Um, I I love them both, and uh, that was a <laughs> difficult part. You're of the my life. first first guy in the history of uh, Brosting Gray, right? Weren't you the first client? I, I am. Uh, Brad Gray is my friend, and um, I he is my first manager. And Gary Shanley was my dear friend. He and was he's the first person that I met when I moved to L.A. And I introduced Gary is that, to Brad. Is that and they true? Were very close, and they had a lot of success together. Well, and, you're saying uh, this like a list. It's all exciting, interesting stuff. You're just listing it like groceries. There, there's just shit that happens, and it's sad. And, hey, 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 um, well, we're getting older now, man. Well, what are you, we're getting what are older, you... and Gary being gone um, will always be an albatross for me, and I will always have affection for him, and I love Brad, and he's like the godfather of my kids, you know? Is so. he? He is. We're very close. Good and, move. Uh, and, and Gary um, was obviously one of the funniest people he really was alive and one of the best people that understood comedy and um and I miss him and um all right we got the, it I was at the funeral and I was sitting next to Norman Lear who uh, accumulatively his age is everyone in the room <laughs> and he and he's a Was genius. he wearing that hat? <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it all out, man. I'm trying to figure it all out. Well, listen. Because you, well, you don't want... Do you have any relationships in your life that are split down the middle where people are estranged? Yes, you do. You got Howard. Howard is an albatross in your no, life. No, that, no, no. I mean, but Howard, Howard... But Howard helped you a lot. Of course he time. did. But what did I do? Go in there and not, not talk for nine years? <laughs> right. Exactly. Thank you. Right. So and you hate Howard, to get, too. And, and all of us... Uh, want I to don't get hate Howard, of, but that red-haired cunt here that's running the show... Your thoughts? <laughs> Who's the red-haired cunt? You know, you know what I'm talking about. Oh. I'm not going to bring it up. The Turk, Salazzo. I thought you meant Trump for a minute. I got confused. <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's say, no, I, Howard did everything for me. I, I wouldn't have this podcast in my living yeah, room. Yeah, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't, yeah. You, you Howard, uh, helped make you famous, man. Now you're, you're on, of course he did. Now, you're on but the But Mad TV is where you exploded off the screen with those curlers in your hair screaming <laughs> and yelling like a crazy fucking nut. How about the time me and uh, you opened up Jamie Masada's club in New York? Oh, my God. I don't think you could tell that story. <laughs> of course I can. Let's leave that one for the anals. Let's put that one in the... Uh... I said nigger like 80 times. Oh, but it was in a arty, bit. Arty, arty, it was arty, in a arty, bit. Arty, arty, arty. I stole Saget's best bit. <laughs> okay, here it is. Ready? I'll tell, the, I'll tell my version without... Well, hurry up. I'm going into withdrawals. <laughs> I have to tell it. So... Uh, Jamie Masada opened the Laugh Factory in New York next to Show West, which is a strip club. Right. And and I wanted to take my daughter to the show, so I had to bring her through the strip, through the, not the strip club, through the places where guys are jacking off in booths. <laughs> and I'm bringing my 18-year-old daughter through the back, and, and then guys are jerking off. And I'm like, Jamie goes, come on, buddy, we'll go through the back. It's just like a party in the Malibu. But he just had a kid, so I'm sure it's good. Uh, oh. know, it'll be nice. Did yeah, you say to Jamie, did. could you introduce my kid to Michael Jackson? He, he had the kid rectally. Yeah, he gave he gave that kid to Michael. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Gave him 10 million bucks. Yeah. Was, we, <laughs> I think this story alone can put, get him arrested. Go ahead. So, so he opened the club in New York three times, the Laugh Factor. He opened it with Dave Chappelle. Dane Cook, and I'm opening it third. He says to me on the phone, Buddy, come to New York, open the club. <laughs> this is the guy that owns the Laugh Factory in L.A. Do you and think he meant open up, like, like get, put the seats down, set up? <laughs> it's going to be great. I didn't know that it had already been opened twice. Right. So I was told I was the grand opener. And it says, on this, I show up. I show up two hours before the show. Right. The sign says, Bob Saget and friends. I said, <laughs> what are you talking about? What friends? Are you going on, Jamie? I got no friends. <laughs> I get there. He goes, Artie's here. <laughs> 
party, you're at the bar, you're drinking Jack, yeah. you're sitting there relaxing. Of course. You say to me that you're going to get on stage and you're going to do a racial exclamatory 25 times. I told I say, you, I told you you thought I was, I said, I'm going to say nigger 25 times. I yeah. said, Artie, that's, that's just, that's funny, man. I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Just wait. <laughs> wait for me. That's hilarious. Don't go on, Artie. I'll be fine. I'll do an hour and a half. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll do 90. You just sit here, and then we can go out after and get something to eat. That's what I said. I go to the bathroom. I come back. Artie's on stage. He's already said the word for the fourth time. He does. You have everything but have a ticker tape counter. You do everything but literally count how many times you're saying it. You say it in slow motion. You say it in fast motion. Well, I put it you in context. It. I was like Michael Richards. I was. Uh... It was. You no. Know, it was worse. You say. You say it in thirties vernacular, twenties vernacular, right. eighteen fourteen vernacular. You do it in contemporary vernacular. You you don't even change it up. You don't even add an A at the end. And it's Jamie all, has all press. <laughs> there's nothing good about it. It is the biggest mass of self destruction <laughs> since since the weapons of the barbarians at the gate. The next day I got the part in health, by the way. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's how it all happened. So then twenty five minutes go by. You have got I you actually have a moment of clarity. I think I've said it twenty five times. And I'm like while this is happening, I don't know if you know this, yeah. the reporter for the <laughs> Daily News, who is African-American, is walking out of the room before I go on. Jamie goes and looks at him and goes, where are you going, buddy? And the guy looks at Jamie and shakes his head and walks out of the room. And I'm now Bob Saget. I'm going, Jamie, you threw me under the fucking trailway station. This is not a bus. <laughs> I get on stage, and I learn, you know, I'd been doing this for 30 years. I knew something. Right. I get on stage, you leave. There's not, <laughs> one person is clapping. It sounds like the end of laughing. I had a set at the comic strip. I get on stage. I said, ladies and gentlemen, that was Artie Lang. Thank you, Artie. I said, this is going to take me 10 minutes. <laughs> I said, it's going to take me 10 minutes to get any response, and then I am going to somehow entertain you. And by the way, the place was pretty packed. Of course it was. And they did not all leave. Well, when I, when I was on it, was. <laughs> the sad part is only 12 people left, which is upsetting. <laughs> well, listen, I, I, uh, I will say this. If Rosa Parks was on the bus I threw you under, she'd be in the front. <laughs> it was. But, but did you, you dig did, it? But you dug out of that hole. I was trying to prove how great of a know. comic you were. I was trying to prove how great of a comedian you are. Yeah, that's what you were doing. <laughs> that's really good. Before you said the Walendas up, cut their feet off. <laughs> Jamie Masada. But, <laughs> but what you did. Why he say that? Already. Why he say that? I have papers here. <laughs> The joke of the whole thing is I've never stopped loving you. That's the crazy part. Because it was it. I was making you look good, dude. It's like no, a, you weren't. Yes, you were doing were. racist, horrible stuff. I you didn't I, know what you were doing because you were drunk. No, no, no. I told you what I would do, and I did it. <laughs> How many comedians do that? I said twenty-five times. I think no, I said, exactly. But I think you overdid the twenty-five. I you gave were. and I gave a I gave a bonus faggot. <laughs> But what you but what you did do was um, I was concerned about you when I got off stage. Yeah. I was just worried where'd you go. <laughs> <laughs> we were in show world. I was going to lap dance from Kathy Griffin. Go after he does that, and you did not look happy before you went on. I was going to lap dance from Kathy Griffin. It was show world. Well, boy, could she take a punch? By, but, the, way, um, by the way, did you ever see her without makeup? David Faustino. She's actually looking very pretty, and so is he. You're They're not. Both David's very nice. I saw him at a gas station recently. <laughs> what? What? You? How much did you order from? <laughs> no, I, no, he wasn't working there. He, you know, he was pumping gas. What'd you say? Fifty unleaded. <laughs> now, how is it we go around making fun of other people's careers, and yet ours are easily made? Fun you're, of? you're, I mean, you got, you got fifty million bucks, three beautiful daughters. I'm sitting here with Dan. I'm broke. <laughs> That's not true. I don't have fifty million bucks. I have. You about, always well. How much you made? You got Full House and that other show on. I have two thousand dollars more than I would have because I never paid you for your car. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you were on Family Matters and uh, that other. Yeah, I had and, Family <laughs> Matters. I worked on Family Matters. Yeah, that, that was an African American show. I was well, great on it. You're the same. You're the same weight as the guy. Uncle. No, you had two number one shows, dude. You were Uncle Mark on. Uh, yes, and I was having a nervous breakdown, and his sister was dying, and I was getting divorced. But now, that how did you mean do that? How I did was you making do, a ton of money to be able to pay for a funeral and a divorce, which are the same thing. That's thing. terrible. That's terrible. 
Well, uh, you know, I mean, you, 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 you. But I have three beautiful daughters, and that is the. They main. are, and I met that them. Is, I met the, them at the Friars Club, and they were so sweet. I knew them when they were little, little girls, and they grew and up. They loved. They loved seeing you, Art. They did. Artie, my daughters know comedy, and they know what comedians are, and they know they're tortured, and I'm their dad, and I'm probably the least kind of least tortured. Have your kids ever I, met a comedian? I'm, <laughs> what? Have your kids ever met a comedian? Have I, what? Have your kids ever met a comedian? Uh, no, my kids have never met a comedian. <laughs> God. No, because I'm their father. <laughs> well, thanks they've for telegraphing actually, it. No, they've met comedians that I know, but they've never <laughs> spent time with an actual real comedian because well, I'm their father. Thanks for hailing down that cab of a joke. <laughs> Go ahead. So you're saying I'm not a comedian and my kids would have never met one. I just want to clarify this. Yeah, I'll, I'll, and can you explain the knock-knock joke I'm about to do? Uh, yeah. Knock, knock, knock. <laughs> no, knock, knock. You know who's there? Tig Notaro. Uh, 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 where, where are you going to go with this? Did you see her? She took her shirt off on her special? I think she's wonderful. She, um, her, she took her shirt off on her special. She looked like uh, uh, Christian Bale in The Machinist. <laughs> well, well, he took his whole arm off. <laughs> Do you think she's funny? What's your favorite Tig Notaro joke? That's the sound of one hand clapping. What's your favorite Tig Notaro joke? Um, I, just, I just like her uh, bravery and I like her lucidity. There, there's a new kind of comedy where people don't do what we do. Yeah, it's do, called drama. Is... <laughs> but people, people don't hit punchlines. You know, That's not, what I they're mean. They're not hitting timing. They're just trying to say something true and trying to say something smart. Right. And, uh, and, and I appreciate it. So, so Gore Vidal would be like Richard Pryor now. Boy, did he have a sweet... He, I got to tell you, he had a sweet asshole. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, listen, Bob. I, I, uh, first of all, I know it's life on the road. You're probably eating an $18 Toblerone. Well, actually, what I'm going to do now is uh, go see my daughter. I'm going to go visit my youngest daughter right I now. Thought we, I thought you would come with me. Jamie Masada's opening a new club in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, I want to work. I'm actually going to be a stripper at his new club. <laughs> listen, you... Uh, it, and by the way, he got terrible reviews. Uh, Jamie Masada opens clan meeting on West Side. <laughs> <laughs> tell your Jamie, daughter. Uh, Jamie's married with a baby, so there you go. So you hey, know. Tell your daughter I said hi. I love you. Yeah, I mean, again. I'm going to tell her you said hi and I love you. Yeah. She's, she's going to fucking run for Mexico. What if I. Well, there'll be a wall around it soon. You better get going. Uh, there you, go. you know, the big joke is the fucking Gulf of Mexico. Mexico is thirty three percent of the where the walls. <laughs> I <be>. know. <laughs> it's like the joke is is just our lives. The joke is the news. And, and that, you're right, and it makes me happy to see Colbert, and it makes me happy to see John Oliver. What a bullshitter! And, and Bill, what a just, bullshitter you are! <laughs> what? No, I love that shit. That's all I'm watching. I can't watch a fucking. Oh, news. I'll tell you what. Whenever I talk to you, you're like, "There's a guy, John Oliver. I love him." <laughs> but you don't like John Oliver? No. Who is Why? he? Who is he? I, Al Oliver, I know. <laughs> Why don't you watch John Oliver? He's oh, come great. On, you fall for that shit. It's What's a, wrong he, with he, you? He the fucking, guy's he not fucking what, he, he Googles Trump what and writes jokes. You gotta have a guy eating a cheesesteak and jerking off in public, and then you it's like it. No, no, it's that fake. Like, like he's a genius. It, it's it's Donald Trump no, on he's the a internet. Nice guy. It's he, he, fakes, he makes jokes. He's got a team of writers that make jokes about beach balls coming in, like a Trump. He, he goofs on Trump. What's easier than that? What, you know what I'm going to do when I come to New York? Goof on midgets. Sit, I'm going to Say nigger for 25 times. You and I are going to sit in front of a computer, and we're going to watch people that I think are good, that are doing something good, that, that are helping us, pe that are helping some people get through this Boy, let me, uh, weird uh, let time. Boy, let, let me fucking put that on my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so me, me and you in front, front of a computer really watching John Oliver marathon. <laughs> you, make, you make me miss you, you know that? Wait a second. That's a nice sound. Is that your asshole, your dick, or your face? That's my Jimmy Durante impression if he was on blow. Jesus Christ, you sound like a guinea pig Fuck the Staphylophagus. Oh, 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 all of a sudden, niggers, niggers are offensive, but guinea's fine. What What the fuck did you just You just say? said what? guinea. You just said guinea. Dude, am I going to get arrested for this podcast? <laughs> Listen, I love you. I so love when, you. So when are we doing the computer thing? I'm going to come there. You and I have to see each other. Do you go to the cellar? Is that where you go and play? Wherever John Oliver is. Where, do you go to the cellar? Yeah, of course okay. I do. Okay. So I'll come to New York in a couple of months. I go to the comedy closet. What, what, what's that mean? Is that, what are you doing, the Dean Martin show? Just going over to the couch? <laughs> the comedy closet. No. Whatever where you want to get together. 
<laughs> I got a lot of North Korean material. I go to the incubator. <laughs> North Korea is doing good, man. They got so are you gonna are you gonna thin up for some of these dates? <laughs> I got I got a whole bunch of dates I'm doing because I'm doing stand up. You're out touring, right? Yeah, but I don't I don't get pompous enough to call it a tour. I I, I just do dates. But you got to lose some weight for the special. Well, I've I've got a new hour and fifteen of material that I have to work because I want to get this special right. But so. drop some weight for the material for the. For the I place. look good. I look fine. I'm gonna go wear Spanx and wrap it around your neck. January January eighteenth, two thousand seventeen. Martin Luther, Martin Luther King's birthday. You got fat. Why did you? I did not. Double life leading Bob Saget has zero regrets. From full house to smutty stand-up, comedian is happy with career choices despite hometown critics. What does that mean? I don't know. People Where, make where'd you grow up? Oh, I was looking on Facebook today, yeah. and people were saying, like, terrible shit. Like, I don't oh, they are. They, they, they're terrible, those people. Honestly. Uh, so I was, I'm going to, like, Alabama this weekend to do stand-up because they went, like, I'll go there. It's supposed right. to be a great club. And uh, I said, okay, I'm going to go there. And, and so I go to book it, and then people on Facebook are like, just like, I would, this guy sucks. I'm like, I haven't seen that kind of shit in like, tw- I don't even It's terrible. It it's terrible. It really is. Why do they, why do they do that? What's wrong with them? They don't because have a they life. they can't be funny, and they're, 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 they're do, they do it anonymously, too, which is Well, terrible. the only thing I know is that I'm funny. That's yeah. the only thing I know. When I say the N-word 25 times, you know who it is. <laughs> I want to get as, as fat as you. How do I do it? Uh, well, you just did it, I think. <laughs> Repeat whatever you did for the last three months. Will you look at my last Instagram and tell me what the fuck's yeah, wrong? Yeah, that's that's what I'll do. Then I'll suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. So I want to look at Bob's. I want to get so ready for Bob's look- John Oliver marathon. <laughs> so a person that looks at Instagram sucks a dick. Well, no, if look I'm looking butt. to see if you're heavy or not. <laughs> Who am I, fucking uh, head of hopper? No, I'm not going to lie to you. I need to lose about 180 pounds. But yeah. I, so get rid of the no, wife. I, I, need to lose, I need to lose like 15 pounds. How much does your wife weigh? Your girlfriend weigh? My ex-wife, she, she weighs two pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told my mother. I was married to Thumbelina. She used to climb my penis <laughs> like the fucking uh, Empire State Building. My mother makes me so anxious, and I overeat. I told my, I, since, the, since the day I met my mother, I put on 280 pounds. <laughs> Well, that, you eat at night. That's the problem. Doesn't even know the punchline. All right, listen. I love right, you. What, what, what hotel? What four? Me, what four seasons are you getting a shave at today? I'm holding my stomach in right now. I can't even see anything. It uh, looks like you're no holding fat. your stomach in. Are the Sklar brothers there helping you? I got no fat on me whatsoever. Yeah. Well, your jokes do. <laughs> if you were laying on top of me, I'd have a lot of fat on me. <laughs> if you were laying on top, I'll tell you what. Enough about Elliot Spitzer. We, you know what's good about us? We would never have gay sex together. <laughs> That's right, because you're abroad. <laughs> That's right. I'm a woman. Hey, where are you going to be next? Let's get the plugs out. So my well, co- I'm, if glad, my cousin's I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna uh, Hoover, Alabama this weekend because I've never been there, and I figured I might as well, you know, figure a good place, take my own life. Oh, there's been a lot of ro- rope sales are up 2%. No, it's called the Stardome. It's, but it's the Stardome. It's a good place. It's those star. Okay. Okay. But listen, I tell anybody out there, Bob Saget, you will not see a better comic. He is so great. He's my friend. I love him. I, I love you. I, do, I love I, you, Artie. I do. Absolutely. Me, and, uh, you know, even though I, I thought you were better thinner. <laughs> Artie, 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 Artie. Yeah. Artie. I look good in all the stuff. I'm, I'm playing the Wilbur. In, in Boston. I'm playing Charlotte. I'm playing uh, Annapolis. I'm playing Irvine. I'm playing Toronto. It's Why all on my website. Why are you doing website. all this? Hey, Toronto, are you going to go back to the Four Seasons or to the Room You Bang trailer? <laughs> no, they closed that hotel. They opened a new one. I didn't bang nobody. I had divorce <laughs> papers in the safe. <laughs> I wiped well, my ass with my own divorce. I really Look, miss Saget. I, I, go to, I, halfway go to through that shoot. I'm half, sick. By the way, Artie, I'm 60 years old, for fuck's sake. What uh, do you want me to look like? Fucking I, I'm Ichabod saying. Cr- you want Ichabod Crane? You what look, do you want? You look 70. I want Bob Crane. <laughs> I look like Bob Crane. I look like I was hitting the head with a pipe. <laughs> Can I be your Bob Crane friend? Yeah, I want you to tunnel underground out of Nazi Germany up my <laughs> asshole. <laughs> How about that? Uh, Hogan's Heroes was uh... that was a, that Gilbert and I had the same bit about it at the same time, which was this is the pitch meeting for Hogan's Heroes. Okay, they're they're in a de- they're in a death camp, <laughs> but they're with nice Nazis, so they kind of don't want to leave. So every time they escape, <laughs> they try to get back in, and we got a dumb one that goes, "I know nothing, I see nothing." And that it works. Was a, it, 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 Gilbert, Gil, there's nothing like Gilbert. I love Gilbert. Uh, I bought Warner Klemper a house. <laughs> I talked to Gilbert. I did his podcast. Did you ever do that? Yeah, about 50 times. Okay. Well, it sounds like you got a full schedule. So, 
So I said to Gilbert. I got a full Gilbert, house. I said to Gilbert on the air, I said, Gilbert, did you ever, did your grandparents go through the Holocaust? He said, no. I said, did your parents go through the Holocaust? He said, no. I said, Gilbert, were you violated as a kid? <laughs> did something happen? He said, no. And I said, then why? <laughs> <laughs> And he started laughing like a little penguin. You, you know, know what? Let me tell you something. They never got involved with Because you know what the Holocaust? Oh, it's very expensive. It's $2. <laughs> Listen, but it's got to be New York water. Yeah, the bread's not good otherwise. Uh, this has been a great... i got to go to Gary Shandling's gra grave and try to get him to stop turning over. Where are you going to go now? I want you to go somewhere and eat a half a pound of hot mustard. I'm interviewing Dave Coulier. <laughs> are you, you going to call Dave right now? It's full It's full house Thursday. Dave's not going to want to talk about the same subject matter. <laughs> <laughs> now, isn't it true that you were, you were the one who... Uh, 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 were you the guy who was banging uh, Alanis Morissette or something? What, what's the story? No, Dave dated Alanis, and Alanis right. wrote a song and about she's three guys, and Dave's one of the guys mentioned in Will the song. Will she go down on you in a in theater? In a theater. He said that never happened. But I was at Dave's house <laughs> when she said, I hate to call you during dinner. She actually <laughs> said that. How about, did Dave write the ironic song? Yes. <laughs> That's, yeah. Did you uh, write the part? It's like rain on your wedding music. day. <laughs> it it's like matter. John Oliver. Talk uh, about here. Trump. Here's what I want to say. And I, I think all your listeners feel the same way. Because people love you. And the people that don't love you, they can go fuck themselves. But, but <laughs> It's the, weird if they're listening. The, well, we, you and I, we got to stay in touch. And uh, I'm really glad we did in the past couple of weeks. By the way, that meant a lot to me. Getting a text from you right. meant a lot to me. Well, I wanted and to know you didn't you didn't text me. How are you doing? You're the only friend who didn't. I said, Well, Bob, what's going on? What the fuck are you talking? Did about? John you, Oliver do a mind? bit on it? I don't know what the fuck you were on. You were on fucking ice cotton candy because I was texting every fucking couple hours. What's going on? <laughs> no, you, well, you had the old number. I, did, I had the old number. I had the new number. I there was a coke I, dealer in Patterson getting those texts. I think you answered me through Twitter, direct messaging. I think that's how you finally said, thank you, Bob. You're the only one that cares about me. And then you fucking blanket you. that. Then you send it out to every other of your four. What is it? What friends. is it like going to high school with a last name that rhymes with faggot? What is that like? Well, I have a joke about it. It's a good joke. You want to hear the joke? Go ahead. A lot of kids called me Saga the Faggot, and to get back at them, I sucked their dicks. That's what I did. <laughs> I must have sucked 500 dicks one That's year. not getting back at them. No, I didn't know that. I got it wrong. No teeth. But uh, here's the thing. I just want you to be well, and I want you to get through Well, I'm going. Life. I'm in withdrawals. Can I go? <laughs> I want you to get through life. I want you to get through it. I want you to live old, man. There's a there's a, there's a a Mexican kid in a, in a Toyota Corolla waiting downstairs for t 20 minutes while you're doing dick jokes. What's the punchline? <laughs> <laughs> There's no. I wish there was one. <laughs> a Mexican kid in a Toyota Corolla. Yeah, well, and that's what he says to his father. Why am I in the trunk? <laughs> uh, so give me. I dates. just, I just want you well. I want to always. I want. I, I, I don't. I don't ever want to lose you. You don't want to lose me. I don't. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna lose a little water weight. You're gonna. Uh, you're gonna go get some checkups. You're gonna make sure your butthole's good. You're, you're gonna uh, you're gonna eat a little healthier. I don't know. I, I think I'm out of line now, but um, I just love you, Artie. I love you. Did you hang up? No, Did you? What, were you no. taking a shit to urinal? What are you doing? Not a pizza came. <laughs> oh, the pizza came. <laughs> a man spills his heart. A man spills his heart to his friend. You get up and leave. You well, what am I going to do, make the guy, the, the guy wait? He was telling me he loved me, too. I am the biggest fucking sap loser. The guy I was telling me how he blew, The guy had a bit about blowing friends in high school, too. I'm sorry. You lured me in By the way, shit on me. The, guy, the pizza guy also loves John Oliver. I love you, Bob Saget. Hold on a second. Let me get a pizza. Well, neither one of you have gluten. Yeah, you get, did you get a gluten-free? Is it, is it pepperoni? <laughs> Is it pepperoni? Anybody named Roni? Pepperoni. Well, I envy the next girl that gets to make out with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you have a don't you have a fucking uh, green energy drink from Gwyneth Paltrow? I'm sorry? No, that's my fucking pancreas. Well, you better start you better start drinking them, Jesus. <laughs> have you had your body checked? Have you had a, your pancreas checked? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I just had pancreatitis. <laughs> oh, and that's now, great. And now I'm fine. I, I, but, I, but they but they but they cleared it. 
Yeah, I'm fine. I'm. I'm. By the way, the new show I'm on is Six Hundred Pound Life. <laughs> okay, I'll try to lose some of that weight too. <laughs> right. I love you, Artie. Hey, buddy, this pizza ain't gonna eat itself. I love you. <laughs> okay, I'll call you back in an hour for more podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you are the best, Saget. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. I love you, man. Bye, bye, sweetie. Bye. That's the best guy ever. That's the best guy ever. <laughs> Who's better than Bob Saget? <laughs> Hey guys, this is James Flippin of RadioMisfits.com and also one of the the behind-the-scenes guys for the Artie Quitter podcast. Right now, you're listening to the free weekly edition of the Artie Quitter Uncensored podcast on the Radio Misfits Network. If you'd like to hear more, visit ArtieQuitter.com and subscribe to the four-day-a-week podcast. Use coupon code ARTIEFAN, that's A-R-T-I-E-F-A-N, and get your first month free.